Hello, everyone. This is Wilson. Today, I want to talk about this integral here involving a square root of a quadratic expression inside the square root. And so if you look at this integrand here, that will be a trickster problem. How do you know that it's a trickster problem? Um, if you try to do a u sub here, it's not going to work because when you let u be 9x squared minus 1, the du will involve an x in there, but there, there was no x for you to, to do that canceling. Okay, so um, you can see that that's that's having a form of a square minus another square. And so that would be a trick step problem. Okay, so how do you know which trick step that we're gonna use? Um, let's just recall something here. Let's just recall something here. So what happens is that we can recall that um, secant squared theta, okay, minus one is equal to tangent squared theta. Okay, so let's just recall this trick identity here. So what we are going to do here is that, do, we, do you see the minus one right here? We also do have the minus one right here. So what we are gonna do is to claim that this nine x squared is equal to the secant squared theta, and then we know what trick stuff that we need. Okay, so what we are doing is that we are going to claim that that secant squared theta, that's nine x squared, okay, nine x squared. Okay, so in this case, then what can we say about secant? When you square the secant, you are going to get 9x squared. So that means that secant data, right? That means secant data is equal to the 3x. So think about this. If you square this side, then you are going to get the uh, secant square. If you square this side, you are going to get nine and then score the x you're going to get x score so you score both sides then you are going to be getting this so right now what happened is that based on this expression right here we can set up the triangle so let's do that so if i set up a right triangle right here um i'm actually getting this right triangle and then the angle that i'm looking at right we're getting data the reference angle for the angle data is this one, the shaded angle right here. Um, remember that we can actually write 3x as 3x over 1, right? Even though we don't need to write it. And so secant data is actually the hypotenuse over the adjacent, right? Because cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So secant would be the reciprocal, which is the hypotenuse. So that means I'm going to label the hypotenuse as 3x right here. And then what about um, the denominator? That's the adjacent. So I'm going to label the one right here. And then using the Pythagorean theorem, we can actually figure out the expression for the opposite, which is the square root of what? The square of this thing, which is 9x squared. So we get that 9x squared over here which comes from here, as you can see. And then what do we do? We subtract the square of this adjacent, which is actually just what? Just minus one. You see what's going on here? That expression looks like exactly like this expression right here. Okay, so I'm going to erase the one because I will need more space. Now, um, from here, we actually, uh, we are going to define the inverse secant function. And so in that, we actually need to restrict uh, data. So in this case, it's data is either um, going to be in the first quadrant. So it's bounded by zero, including zero, and then also um, bounded above by pi over two, but then data will not be equal to pi over two. And then, or it's also possible that data is between pi and then three pi over two. So in this case, um, the angle can be either in the first quadrant or in the third quadrant, but sometimes the angle can also be equal to zero or equal to pi. Okay, so that's what we are doing when we are defining the, um, what we're restricting for data when we're defining the, the inverse or the arc secant function. Okay, so now if we solve for x here, okay, if we solve for x here, then what are we doing here? If we divide both sides by 3, then we are going to be getting 1 over 3 secant data. 
then you may say, why do I solve for x right here? Why don't I just keep this expression right here? It's really because I want to find an expression for dx. And in order for us to find an expression for dx, I want to do this so that I can take the derivative of dx with respect to theta so that I can get an expression. So what happens is that if I take the derivative of x with respect to theta, then I'm going to be getting 1 over 3, and then secant theta tangent theta d theta. And then actually, when you have all this information, then we're ready to start the problem. So let's get started on the problem right now. So now starting with the integral, we are going to have the one at the top, right? There is nothing that we can do to the one. And then now what about the bottom? The bottom is this. We have 9x squared minus 1. And that's equal to what? That's actually equal to secant squared theta minus 1. And that can actually be turned into tangent. Okay, so 9x squared minus 1 is the same thing as secant squared theta minus 1. Because we are claiming that um, secant squared theta is the same thing as 9x squared. So in that case, we can actually replace this expression, which means that we can replace this expression by using tangent squared. So I'm getting just the tangent inside the square root. Okay, so I'm getting the tangent inside the square root. So tangent squared theta here. Now, but that's not finished yet because there was still a dx here. So make sure that you don't forget the dx. The dx is not trivial. The dx must be replaced by this one third and then secant data, tangent data, d data. And so that's going to give us one over three secant data, tangent data, and then d data. So now our whole integral is in terms of data. It's not, it does not contain an x anymore. See that before, if you do not replace the dx or if you omit the dx, then you are still going to be putting the dx right here and then that's not okay, right? So it's missing a lot of important information in the problem. Okay, so what we are gonna do is to clean up this expression for now. So let's see what's going on here. Um, so we are going to pull out that 1 over 3 to the outside, right? So we have 1 over 3, and then the integral. Now, all that stuff is in the numerator, so I'm going to just put that in the numerator. We have secant data in the numerator, tangent data in the numerator, and then the d data also in the numerator, and then what about, what about the denominator? Regarding the denominator, we have uh, the square root of tangent square. And so you know that when you square and then you take the square root, then you are going to somewhat cancel out the square and the square root. But it's not that simple. Make sure that you remember that um, we are actually getting an absolute value of the tangent. Yeah, so it's not as, sim as simple as... just canceling the square and the square root. Because remember the tangent can actually be a negative quantity. And so if tangent is negative, you square it, it will be positive. And when it's positive, when you take the square root, then it's going to be, of course, it will going, it's going to be positive. But the problem is, if you simply just write tangent right here, then you're actually having a negative quantity, which is not equal to the square root. So that's why we need to put absolute value around this tangent. But you know that in the next step, we are going to talk about how to remove the absolute value. It's actually quite simple here. So in the next step, remember that um, we define the secant function and then we restrict the data because we are, we are actually define, also defining um, the arc secant function because we require this function to be one-to-one -one in order for its inverse to exist. And so as you can see here, data is in the first quadrant or data is in the third quadrant. And now what happens when you plug data into tangent? Tangent is going to be positive in the first quadrant, and then it's also going to be positive in the third quadrant. And so no matter which angle that you put in here, what happens is that we are going to have what we are going to be having that 
uh, tangent is non-negative in this case, right? So what does that mean? That means we are going to be getting one over three, and then we can remove the absolute value. So secant data, and then tangent data here, and then d data. And then we have the tangent data right here. Um, and of course, data cannot be exactly equal to zero or pi in this case, because we are going to run into dividing by zero if uh, data is zero, because tangent of zero is zero, or tangent of pi is zero, okay? So right now we are gonna, we can cancel out the tangent. So we can cancel out the tangent here. We can cancel out the tangent, it becomes one over one. And so do you see what's going on here? We are actually having one over three and then the integral of secant data and then d data. Um, what I wanna say is that uh, if you memorize the NT derivative for secant data, then you can get to the answer already. Otherwise you will need to do a use of. But now I'm just going to recall the NT derivative of secant data, which is actually ln of absolute value of secant data plus tangent data, and then plus the constant c. Okay, so now the rest, right, <clears throat> of the steps would be really just to replace the expressions involving the data by using expressions right here or by using the right triangle so that we can figure out an expression for x. So what we have here, secant data is actually simple, it's just 3x plus the tangent, tangent is going to be opposite over Tangent is going to be opposite over, um, no, not hypotenuse, it's tangent opposite over adjacent. And then we plus C, and then that's it for this problem. Okay, so that's it for this problem right here. If you like this video, please give me a like, subscribe to my channel, and share my videos to others. It will give me support and make more videos. If you have questions or have a topic that you want me to talk about, please leave me a comment and I will try my best to see if I can do those topics in this time because I actually have a lot of topics in mind to do. Um, thank you for watching this video. I will see you.